Amen, amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Just encourage people around you. Thank you, worship team. My husband is ministering today, and he is not here. And then I'm going straight to the airport right after this. Michelle's accompanying me. Uh, so my husband and I, we're not even going to see each other this afternoon. Which, uh, you know, you just want that, you know, five-minute hello, hi, how's it going? Okay, all right, bye. All right. Um, not even that. All right. So, all right. So um, I want to bring up a slide for you. I have a new book that's starting to trickle in, trickling in. This one right here is finally uh, being realized. And I, like I said, I just have a very few amount of copies right now. They're starting to trickle in. So I have one right here. I'm going to give this book away. And the person that was, I, I just, you know, sometimes I look around and I'm like, okay, who do I want to give this book to? Um, but there's this man in a green coat, uh, Midway. Yeah, that's you. You looked, you, you looked, you went like this. Yeah, that's you. Okay, I, I want to give this book to you. Go ahead, Kevin, just hand this book to him. You know, there's not many copies of this right now. So you're getting kind of a pre- precursor of the book, and your wife's probably going to be like, no, 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 give it to me. Uh, but it's really about the supernatural power of dreams. There's a whole journey underneath the book. I'll, I'll hit some highlights of it today. Um, but what I feel is like the Lord's going to give you like business stuff in the night. Like he's going to speak to you about the, like a, like a business edge and giving you the edge on some uh, plans in the future, and he's really going to work with you in that regard. Um, and so you're going to see it first at night, you know. And then also there's um, going to be some divine appointments, and you're going to see it first at night. And he's going to show you, um, uh, you know, that that it's him. He's going to make sure you understand this is the Lord who is guiding you and directing you. So he's very good to help you to know that you're not missing it. Um, uh, this, is, this is something the Lord is leading you into. And so it's going to be a good thing for you. So I believe that that book is going to help to open some things in that area for you. Amen? Amen. Okay. So this book is trickling in, um, but I want you, you know, I wanted to uh, let you know that it is um, here. You can uh, order it or it'll be in the bookstore in a couple weeks if you want to get it. But here's the other thing. Um, and this is boggling my mind because I didn't write it for this obvi audience, obviously. Um, but it is ranking high in on Amazon. Uh, it keeps like hitting uh, new release number one, new release number one, new age dreams and dreams like in general, not Christian dreams. Um, and that is a signal to me that this is a book that you can uh, buy a few copies and people who don't know Jesus but are kind of like spiritually bent, that it's a book you can give to them and that it's going to open up some conversation so you can help align all that to the things of God. Amen? Amen. So use it as a tool. Really use it as a tool. Um, you know, and I was surprised when I started seeing those rankings like again and again and again. I'm like, okay, God's going to use this for people who don't know him as much as he's going to use it for those who do. All right. But, um, okay, so, so anyway, this book, we can take this slide off. Uh, this book, um, it really was birthed in Australia. All my books have a journey underneath it. The, the Lord, um, you know, really helps me in, in the sense of, you know, I will walk out a narrative. And then as I'm learning, these will be the contents of my books. And um, I, did, I have, that's book number six. I have started book number seven. Woo, yeah. All right. <laughs> Give that one a few years. <laughs> All right. So, but anyway, the, the book, uh, Wake in the Dreamscape, it was birthed in Australia when I recognized that there was this unique realm for dreams and visions that was blanketing the nation. Um, now, how many of you have had a dream from God before? Raise your hand. Great. I'm, I'm speaking to the right people. Okay. How many of you have had a vision before? That's different than a dream. Okay. How many have ever had a vision in a dream? That's a whole different ballgame. Some of you are like, I don't even know what that is. Okay. Uh, so you kind of have to experience it to know what it is. But um, it's like one of the most uh, a powerful form of prophetic dreaming. Obviously, God would have to do it. Okay. It's not something you can, you can just make happen. All right. And so, so anyway, this realm that I'm telling you uh, that seems to blanket that nation, Australia, um, we're starting to venture into New Zealand now. And how do I just say venture? Not venture. We're breaking open a nation. Uh, you're either going to break it open 
open or you're going to break. This is how I feel when I go into to new nations and we start tackling uh, what's out there. Uh, but anyway, um, over in that area, the whole dream realm is really, really crazy. And it is a realm. It seems to sit on the nation. Um, uh, it's been accessed by the non-Christian indigenous uh, for ungodly purposes. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, they astral project through that realm. Um, familiar spirits that they think are their ancestors access them, use that as an access point for them. And they don't know better. They don't know any better to not allow that. It's also where God is is uh, releasing his angelic messenger he, messengers. He's releasing his dreams. Um, you know, on occasion, we see it in the Bible, when he would he would take some of his his uh you know, his, his prophets, his servants, and he would transport them supernaturally. It all happens through that realm. Um, uh, Pastor Tony Kim, he mentioned that that's happened to him a couple of times, probably in some of his more dangerous trips. I can see that happening where, and it literally messed up his chronal liberum is what he said. I'm quoting him. All right, so that, that realm, okay, uh, I, I, I would liken it to what we read about in the book of Daniel somewhat. How many of you read the book of Daniel before? And you notice that he would have dreams and visions, right? And we read about it today. We read what he wrote. It's very, very powerful dreams and visions. And if you read into the context of it, it almost seemed like, this is the way I interpret it, it almost seemed like the, the, that realm that I'm trying to explain to you in plain language it, it's almost like it was right in front of him, like he could just open his eyes in partnership with God and see the visions of God. Um, he would lay down his, uh, to go to sleep, and, and he would start to, to see uh, the future and narratives of the future and, and movies about the future, okay, that it was just like right there. That's what I am trying to describe, and that's uh, somewhat what I encounter over in that side of the world, all right? And so, so even though, um, you know, it, on that side of the world, it's been, it's been somewhat misused, and I talk about that more in my book. It was still, it's still a realm created by God. And here's the thing. God wants to speak to his church, you and I, without interference in your dreams, okay? He wants to speak to us without interference. Interference, um, and there's a whole boatload of reasons why, and I'll give you some of them today. Um, and he wants to give you visions within your dreams. That's the most powerful form of prophetic dreaming, um, and that's something you would have to experience to know what that is like. And so, so um, you know, this this story and this book has been unfolding for several years. But what I want to share with you, I'm going to share with you a couple of you know spiritual happenings that I had, um, and then I'm going to give you some more practical uh, things that that can be your application, okay? So I just want to know that there's going to be a nice balance in all of this. And so when I was conferencing in Australia about 2019, and strangely, some of the points out of this conference, I didn't realize that I wrote them down, and I just happened to find them yesterday. Uh, I just opened up an old journal just randomly, and I opened up to a page, I'm like, these are all the things I'm talking about tomorrow, amen, all right? So I took it as a confirmation. But I was conferencing there, and I encountered an angel, at this conference, um, a very specific one. Now, how many know that in the New Testament, you read the New Testament, encountering angels is normal. That's not abnormal. You're not crazy if you encounter an angel. And when you're on assignment, God sends angels to help you. Okay, they're sent to help the heirs of salvation. And they will help you in the things that we know that angels do. They do a lot of stuff. Um, one of them is to protect you. Really, you know, the, the, how many have known that to be true? You know, he'll send angels to protect you. Um, she's not here today, but I remember when Pastor Catherine um, Perez, uh, she was uh, driving in, down the freeway, and what happened to her was, all, you know how all the cars just stopped suddenly? You know, just something idiot happens up front, you know, and, you know, and, and all the cars stop so fast, right? And you don't have time to stop, Right? And so she knew that she was going to hit the car in front of her. And so what happened is instead of hitting the car in front of her, she drove straight through it and then ended up on the side. And the person in the car saw her drive through his car. 
And he got out of the car, said a few nasty words, you know, what was that? And, and um, because he saw what happened and you just like, you can't describe it, but they knew it. And she knew that was an angel that was protecting her. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Some of you who've been on some really challenging ministerial assignments, you have known that angels have, you have seen the angelic help. All right. So anyway, um, I saw this angel um, and this angel, uh, and I discerned why the angel was there. That's the gift of discerning of spirits. That means you'll you'll um, know uh, you'll you'll discern uh, and know uh, the kind of spirit that is right there, and you'll know why it's there. And so I discerned it was an angel sent to restore lost time of all things. An angel sent to restore lost time. All right. And so I knew I needed to address this at the conference, but I was trying to figure out how do you, how do you talk about something like this without becoming overly mystical and weird and, and really landing it well, which is what I'm trying to do today, you know? And, and so, you know, when I addressed it and I began to talk to them about all the biblical dynamics of time, I began to discuss that with him, which I'm going to give you some of those points today. Uh, when I addressed it and I prayed, um, I asked the Lord to release his uh, angel sent to restore time to the conference attendees, you know, and that's just something, you know, we see Jesus when he, he there was a point in time where he explained, I think it's Matthew 26, and he explained that he could ask God the Father to send angels, you know, on assignment, that he could ask Father God, um, I ask you for, for 12 legions of angels, that he could do that if he wanted to, um, but he always stayed in the will of his father, he needed to go to the cross, so he didn't ask for the angelic army at that time. But it does instruct us that, that we can ask God to send angels when we know why they're there, okay? And so I asked the Lord, I asked um, uh, our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name to release that angel sent to restore time, to release him to the conference attendees. And this tangible felt wind blew through the building. You know, he sends his ministering spirits like wind and fire. Okay, we know that from the Psalms. And, and so, you know, and when I did that, this wind just blew through the building. Everybody could feel it. It was just, it was just undeniable. All right. And, but I wondered for years, why an angel to restore time of all things? You know, I just wondered that for years. All right, so fast forward, okay? Um, I'm getting ready to go back to Australia in a month, less than a month, actually. And um, a couple weeks ago, I was uh, in a dream, one of those, those vision-type dreams, you know, where everything's kind of open, and you're really in a, a, a very highly spiritual space, but, it's, but it is real, and I was being spiritually attacked, spiritually buffeted uh, by a, a territorial spirit in that area of the world. Now, I'm an intercessor. I deal with these things commonly. I don't go after it. I don't, like, try to seek these things out, but they just kind of happen along the journey. And so you said, what do you mean a territorial spirit? Well, we usually will refer to territorial spirits when um, Ephesians 6 gives us kind of a description, verse 12 specifically. It talks about powers, principalities, um, uh, rulers of darkness, and hosts of wickedness in high places. And those are territorial spirits, ones that, that seem to want to afflict whole geographies, you you know, whole cities or whole whole nations um, versus the demons that might possess a person individually. They're different, okay? Because there's a rank and file in that in that um, in that hierarchy of being. And so this one was a territorial spirit, and it resembled uh, like this big, huge worm, locust type of creature. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, the creature was definitely an eater. I discerned it uh, as such. And, and specifically, even more specifically, I discerned it to be a bitter eater of time. A bitter eater of time. And I'm dreaming this out, okay? I'm dreaming it out. Um, actually, a thief of years. A thief of years. And so I woke up shouting, God's going to break his neck. God's going to break his neck, but whatever. Uh, you know, and, you know those, those uh, middle of the night shouts that, that I do sometimes, you know, because of dreams. But let me ask you a question. Okay, you ready for a question? Uh, online, you ready for a question? Have you experienced a time thief in your life? Ever? 
Have you, years of time seem like they've been devoured by bitter circumstances? Yeah, I think a lot of us have experienced this on some level. And so um, I woke up with this verse on my heart, and this will help solidify it. And I know this verse. Um, I like this verse. Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Um, so this verse is about God restoring some years. How does that happen? Okay, that's a supernatural experience. That, that has to happen supernaturally. How does he restore years? Well, he's got to get into something about time that he gets into, and he begins to work some things out. And so on your notes there, um, number one, says, uh, God is the author of what? He's the author of time. Okay, those of you are online. God is the author of time. He can stretch it. He can bend it. He can fast forward it. He can shorten it. He can extend it. He can do a whole lot more. And we actually see this happen in the Bible. All right, Hezekiah, I love how I, I can feel you listening. This is great. I, I love it. I can totally feel your, your curiosity. Um, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 8 to 11 says, And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What is a sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I will go up to the house of the Lord the third day? And then Isaiah said, This is a sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward? 10 degrees or go backwards 10 degrees. And we're talking about a sundial. That's how they told time back then. All right. And Hezekiah answered, it's an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. No, but let the shadow go backward 10 degrees. So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. In other words, as a sign for Hezekiah in that situation, God um, uh, manipulated time just to prove it. Okay? Just to prove it. All right, and then we see the story of Joshua. I love the book of Joshua. How many of you have read the book of Joshua? All right, I love chapter one where God's encouraging him and preparing him to take the promise, you know, and he's just revving him up, you know, be bold, be courageous. Every place uh, you put the sole of your foot, it is yours, Joshua. And he's just really getting him ready, right? And so Joshua uh, starts battling. He starts going after it. He starts taking, taking the promise, taking the land little by little. And he runs into a situation where the Lord gave him the word that you are going to win this battle, this battle with this army, specific army, and you're going to, you're going to win this. Okay. I'm giving them into your hand. And so they went, they went to fight, um, based on the word of the Lord. They went after it. The only problem was the, the sun began to set and, and the sun setting was a problem because they wouldn't be able to finish fighting. They wouldn't be able to complete that battle and possibly not win because they needed some more time to fight. It wasn't matter if they were going to win or not. They just needed, um, they need adequate sunlight and time to finish it, all right? They just need to finish it. And so Joshua, uh, just on his own, um, he, he just stood before the Lord. If you read the, how it's spoken in context, he stood before the Lord and before the armies of Israel, and he spoke to the sun, and he said, stand still. And what happened, the Lord honored his prayer, honored his word, and the son stood still for an entire day until he could finish his fight, until he could win, you know? And so, so here we see again that God manipulated time on behalf of Joshua so he can complete his assignment. You see, here's the thing. When God gives you something to do, he gives you an assignment. Well, there's a few things that, that always happen. You never have enough money, and you never have enough strength, and you never have enough time. And if God doesn't get in it, it won't happen. But God is going to get in it. Okay? This is the faith element. God's going to get in it. And my husband one time was in Brazil, and it was just kind of this random thing that he, he got invited to preach a miracle service and but they only gave him 20 minutes to preach and it was a big crowd it's like how are you going to do that I don't know if any of you have done any 
preaching like that, you know you need time to kind of build it up, healing crusades and healing stuff. It has to do with healing and miracles, man. You got to build it, all right? 20 minutes, forget it. Might as well walk off, all right? So I would have walked off. Like 20 minutes is not going to work, you know? <laughs> all right. Uh, but, but he did it. And, and he went to uh, uh, start preaching, start ministering to this really large crowd. Um, they had so many miracles to count. I think it went on, on Brazilian television all over. And it had so many miracles to count and so much ministry that happened that there was no way that could have happened in 20 minutes. There's no way. So God did something with time so he can complete his assignment. All right. So God is the author of time. He can stretch it, bend it, fast forward it, shorten it, extend it. Okay. Um, and, and so, uh, conversely, time can also disappear in a negative sense or be unproductive. Have you ever woke up? List in hand. This is Pastor Alex, okay? List in hand, all right? Ready to accomplish much, but then you wasted the whole day. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> Not looking at anybody. All right. <laughs> Distractions came. Emergencies came up. Um, the time doing what needed to be done, it just disappeared. Okay. Um, this causes so much anxiety because now you're even more behind the next day. And so what I'm convinced about is I'm convinced that God wants us to be efficient he wants to be effective. One of my, you know, um, with my global team, um, I'm always asking the question, are we being efficient? Are we being efficient? Okay, efficient, efficient, efficient. I'm constantly saying that. So, so that's also the heart of the Lord, to be efficient, to be effective, but we need time to accomplish his plans and purposes. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do a work in each and every one of us, those of you here in the room, those of you online, those are going to hear this later. Um, he wants to do a work in us in regards to timing because when we align to the timing of the Lord, things get done. Do you ever, have you ever noticed those people, you're like, how do they get done everything that they get done? Okay. They've got something happening on their life with timing. Okay, uh, somebody say, well, they must have a good team. When you have a good team, you work just as hard, right? You can multiply stuff, but, but that, doesn't, that doesn't take away the time element, all right? And so, so people who have that going on with them, how do you do what you do? Okay, there's, there's something on them that the Lord has given to them to maximize time, actually supernaturally maximize time. I really believe that. And so, um, you know, God is, I believe God is establishing your steps. I believe God is, estab is making everything beautiful in its time. He's doing a work of timing in your life. All right, and so time, why was it given? It was given to us to fulfill purpose. That's why time has been created and given to us. And it manifests itself in seasons. All right? It manifests itself in seasons. You see, a year is measured in what? Fall, winter, spring, and summer. That's how we measure a year. And a year is, a, is the time, but there are seasons within the time. And what you need to do is you need to catch your season. Catch your season. Whenever, on a side note, whenever we get into a new year, sometimes I have to work with people about letting go of some things in the previous year because they're still stuck there. Like, and they're missing their season. They're missing, uh, you know, the, the natural transition, the supernatural transition into the things of God, the, thing, the new things that God wants to do. And we have to do actually some deliverance work or some inner healing in their lives and say, okay, why, why are you still stuck over there? What is it that's holding you over there? All right, but, but you have to catch your season. You don't wear winter clothes in the summer. I'd hope not. You know, when seasons change, you got to adjust yourself. And every season fulfills a specific person, uh, purpose in your life. And, and so God, he measures your life in terms of purpose. Now, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, he explained this, that life isn't measured by duration but donation. 
I'll say that again. Life isn't measured by duration, but donation. Uh, what did you do while you were living? You see, Jesus said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Why? Because you have to do something. And so when we align to our times and our seasons, God makes the outcome beautiful. All right? When he starts a thing, he's the one who ends the thing. We got to get this. We want to be in step when he starts a thing, and we want to be in step when he ends a thing. And sometimes this is where churches get out of step with the Lord. Have you ever seen churches go into, you know, almost like monument uh, uh, status? You know what I'm saying? Because they keep doing the same thing when God is doing, what, a new thing. And so we don't want to keep things going too long. Um, you know, we want to enter into that new thing. Have you noticed, like, we have kind of a consistency of a new thing here? Because we understand that. We, it's like it's a new season. It's a new song. You know, that's, you know that song, Israel Hutton. Okay. It's a new season. And, and, we, and it's time to do something new, all right? And that's, that's how it works. And so God is always doing a new thing, and so you will too as he directs. But here's, here's the, the flip side is when your timing is off, hear me now, when your timing is off, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the wrong things tend to happen. And when you're out of sync with the timing of God, you end up fighting the wrong battles. We don't need that. I don't need that. All right, you don't need that. And so how do you align to the timing of the Lord? How do you do that? I mean, I want to align to the timing of the Lord. <laughs> I want to align to the timing of the Lord. I don't want to get left behind, too far ahead. I want to get I want right in sync, right in precision. All right, and you could do it. You could do it. All right, um, I'm not going to make this real hard, uh, and I don't believe it's hard. I just think we just need to understand it. And, and so how do you align to the timing of the Lord? The first thing is you want to make your confession. All right, make your confession. Some of you, all you ever say is, I'm always late, I'm always late, I'm always late, I'm always late. I'm a late person. I'm never, some of you, some of you that's like your thing, okay? I want, I want you to change that. I'm on time. Say, I'm on time. I was, I was something the other day. I was thinking about uh, many, many are called, a few are chosen. The reason they're, they're not chosen is because they're always late. <laughs> so we don't pick you. God doesn't pick you because you don't show up on time. That's sad, but it's true. Okay, we don't want to be, be like that. All right? So, so some of you need to, like, start saying that to yourself. I, I'm an on-time person. Okay. I think I'm like 95%, I'm up to the minute, <laughs> you know, I'm up to the minute, but I'm there, <laughs> right? Um, uh, so make your confession. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can direct your heart um, and your life by what you say. That's Proverbs 18. But I left on your notes here 10 decrees to align to his timing. You can use this if it works for you, if it fits you. Maybe you need to, to take a few things away, add your own thing in, you know, things that really, you know, speak to you, and, and make it your own. But, you know, you want to have some kind of confession, you know, that I'm, I'm in the right place at the right time for the right reasons. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, that you've given me right timing and that you are um, ordering my steps and you are, uh, uh, you know, you are making everything beautiful in its time, all right? And so, so there's things that you can begin to confess. But, but what we don't want to confess is, is, is I'm late and I'm, I'm never on time and I, I can't get there and, I, and I'm always in a delay. You know, we, we don't want to have that to be our constant rhetoric, all right? So we want to make our confession, the second thing is we want to enter the watch of the Lord. And I know I speak into this every single time I get in front of you because it is so important. This is so, uh, unpacking the watch of the Lord and night watch prayer and all of the dynamics around it, it is hugely important. Every third Friday, we have night watch prayer uh, across the campuses and you can go to the website and get the schedule. Uh, but the but the thing about this, and I do appreciate and love that more and more people are going, but, but there's still some, some of you I need to convince, okay? Some of you I need to convince. And so the watch of the Lord, um, we see in scriptures uh, that we, we are instructed to watch for the Lord, for the return of Jesus Christ. That's what we're instructed to do, all right? And, and there is a very powerful principle in watching for the Lord and actually aligning to his timing, 
all right? You have to actually believe Jesus is coming back to actually enter into a watch. You know, and, and conduct your life that way. With, with that in mind, right? In, in Mark 13, 35 to 37, says, watch therefore. Everybody say, watch therefore. For you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Now, we understand this is a, uh, you know, a metaphor. It is a parable, you know, describing Jesus. When the master of the house is coming, Jesus is coming. In the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. We don't want him to find us sleeping. We don't want him finding, to find us uh, in some sort of act of sin. We don't want him to find us late. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> not really. But... <laughs> And so, you know, we don't want him to find us asleep on the job. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. All right, so what's interesting about time, and we already talked about a little bit, is that God created time. He's the author of time. He actually created time, but he lives outside of time. He lives outside of time. Isn't that interesting? And, And that's why God can see. The end from the beginning, even in the middle. You know, he said it was, it is finished. It, it's interesting, you, you, you look at some of the phrases in the Bible where one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And that's because, you know, time, the dimensionality of time is very different to God than it is to us. And things like the, how the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the earth. How did that happen? Okay, you know, because that was outside of time and now we are living out in chronological time the things that have already happened. It's, that's freaky, isn't it? That's a freaky concept. And, and so God created time. He lives outside of it. It is finished. And that's why he can see the end from the beginning. When he talks to you, he's speaking to something you're headed to. When he says it will be okay, it's because he sees what is coming. When he says, prepare yourself, okay, you know, watch therefore. When he says, prepare yourself, that's because he sees what's coming. And he always sees the end from the beginning, and that's why he's the alpha and the omega, right? So so part of getting that timing of the Lord is actually learning how to watch for the Lord, okay? That's undergirds watchman prayer, night watch prayer, you know, things that we, I keep bringing to you. Okay, what does it mean to watch? We look, we peer out into the distance, we investigate, we get a, a new perspective, an angle on something, we see approaching danger, okay, and this is all in the context of prayer. Um, and it has to do with seeing so you can guard your future. Seeing so you can guard your future. So your future doesn't get devoured by the bitter eater of years. Mark 13, 35 to 37, just read it. Um, it gives us some clue of those watch points. I won't get into this. I'm not teaching a big thing on night watch prayer, but just to highlight. Um, evening, midnight, crowing of the rooster in the morning. Our prayer segments are a little bit different, but basically we are praying through all of those watches um, because there's specific breakthrough points, there's specific prophetic promise. You can enter into them through through the watch of the Lord. Um, how many of you wake up at a certain time at night? You always wake up at that time, like three o'clock, two twenty-two. Um, waking up at, at midnight. How many experience that? Like, there's this. Yeah, that's probably your watch. Okay, that's probably your watch. All right, number three, talking about how to align to the timing of the Lord is awaken your dreams at night. Awaken your dreams at night. You see, the benefit of entering into the watch of the Lord is that it brings a protective and healthy element into your night seasons. All right, Um, it also aligns you to his book that he wrote about you before you ever got here. You see, he wrote a book about me? Yeah, he did. Psalm 139, 16 says, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, In your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. A lot of us, like we look at this, and this is, is, uh, to me it's fascinating that God had you in mind 
on this level before you ever existed, at the same time you have a free will and you don't have to live out his plans, that's not a good deal. You know what I'm saying? And to actually know that, that he has um, things set for you every single day of your life and he meant it. Like every day of your life counts. This is why we don't stop our lives short. We don't stop in the middle. You know what I'm saying? This is, you got to understand this. And, and so, so, you know, it, it, you enter into the watch of the Lord. You begin to, you know, see what he's seeing and begin to see into the future with his eyes. And you begin to understand what he has for you you know, in, in the big scope of things of the watch of the Lord waiting for Jesus to return. And you begin to align, you begin to align to things. And then, um, you know, again, there's this protective element. Whenever we start talking about dreams and waking up dreams, um, then I really have to shout about prayer at night. Um, my two worst seasons of spiritual warfare, and I would say um, I, had, I had several years swallowed up as a result of it, they both began with um, demonic dreams at night, and they were, both happened in seasons when we didn't have a night watch per cover. And I learned, I learned that we have to have night watch prayer. We have to. If we're going to, you know, be a supernatural church, actually gets the word of the Lord and dreams from the Lord, we have to have that cover because, um, and I'll explain to you in just a minute how that all works, but but um, just as much as God wants to get into your dreams, Satan wants to get into them too. It's a very contested realm, very contested realm. All right, so the, just to give you the concept, the Hebrew day begins at night and not at sunrise as we believed. You know, those of us here in Western civilization here, Western, Western thinking, um, you know, we think the, the day starts in the morning. And, um, you know, we're on the Roman calendar, not on the Eastern calendar, you know, Hebrew Eastern calendar. And, and you know, we have to recognize that, that um, you know, the timing of the Lord, uh, the calendars of the Lord, without getting too obsessed with it, you know, there's some certain things we definitely want to pull out. For example, the Hebrew day begins at night, not sunrise. And what God is doing you know, that book he wrote on your life, often he is depositing his plans into your waking day for your future, okay? He's depositing his plans at night for that day, for your future, in your dreams at night. Like a seed that's going to have a harvest, okay? That's what he's doing. So, so your, your waking day actually begins with your real day at night. Okay? So, could this be, you know, and forgive the term, and I will explain the term, uh, could this be what's behind that uh, common experience known as deja vu? And you're like, that's a new age term. You're blaspheming God right now. No, I'm not. Uh, it's, let me explain it. I don't have any other better term. Okay, I don't. Um, it's a French word, actually. We had some, some French speakers in the first service like, yeah, it is. You know, they're confirming everything I was saying. So it's a French word. Um, but what does it mean? It means that you lived through this before. You've done this before. Now, how many had that experience before? You're like, I've done this before. Yeah, most of the room, okay? And you're, it's, not, it's not demonic. It's not new age or anything. And, and I'll explain to you how this, how this happens. But... I've studied this from a lot of different angles, you know, because I'm like, I know this happens, and I have a sense of why it happens, but let me see what other entities say about it. And so the, there's medical and psychological explanations for that phenomenon, but most of them are negative, and they infer that if you're having that, that something is mentally wrong with you. <sighs> All right, so... No, personally, I didn't think there, it was a medical thing. I didn't think it was a psychological thing. I thought it, I always thought it to be some kind of reflection of, you know, your alignment with God in the moment. I always took it as a confirmation that I'm where I need to be, right time, right moment, right reason. 
all right? And so a deja vu is like walking into a memory, only you don't remember ever having done that. And I believe it's a waking experience of something you already dreamed about from the Lord. You just don't remember the dream. And so this leads us to this whole discussion. You know, if if we really want to align to the timing of the Lord and we want to awake in our dreams at night, there's this um, other thing that we have to drill into, and we have to talk about this. And this is talk, and this has to do with um, the realm of dreams being one of the most seriously contested areas of your life. Whenever I am in a group like this, without fail, there are people who can't sleep, they got insomnia, they're having to take sleeping pills, they're not dreaming at night, they're having nightmares at night, night terrors at night. Um, there's, there's things like that going on with them. You say, why is that happening to me? Because Satan doesn't want you to dream the dreams of God. He wants you to dream his dreams, not God's dreams, because in your dreams at night, things get created. Okay, and that's why, you know, night watch prayer is super important because, you know, takes the edge off of a lot of that. But, but some of you, you haven't yet entered into freedom in that realm. And, and I, can, I can tell the level of dreams that God wants to give you by how contested that area is in your life. Right? So I'm going to invite the worship team uh, to come up, and I shut my notes here prematurely. I don't know why. Hang on. I gotta open it back up. <laughs> All right. I know for myself, I've had seasons where this was the most horribly contested area of my life, horribly, um, and it was it was full of um, insomnia, nightmares, night terrors, you name it. At the same time. I get the most incredible dreams of God. I mean, like life-changing, shifting, history-making kind of dreams, okay? And so I'm gonna invite you to stand right now. And let me me ask the room and let me ask online, um, how many here are struggling to sleep at night? Raise your hand. You're struggling to sleep at night, like you're having to take sleeping pills, um... You know, it's like it's like a it's like a real thing. It's a lot of hands in here. That's the, uh, this actually is pretty typical. This is it's very typical, but it's not um, it's not what God has for you. This is not where God wants it to to stay. Okay, and you may have been given some really good reasons from um, maybe a doctor or something, uh, maybe chemical imbalance. Um, you know, and some, whatever, they may have diagnosed it in a certain way. You may have gone to even a sleep institute, um, not being able to even to breathe, you know, a lot of things. But even in this, whatever, whatever that report is, God wants to heal you. He wants to set this area free because the dream realm, you know, when he speaks to you in your waking day, it's powerful. But when he speaks to you at night, all of the, uh, the, the restraints are gone. You know, your logic is gone. It's subdued, okay? And, and, and so he can get some information into you that he can't get into you in, uh, during your waking day. And so this, this is a realm that, you know, he's, he's, you know, that needs to be put in order as a believer in Jesus. We've got to be able to dream at night and hear his voice, get his plans, get aligned to God and get in step with what he has for us. Amen? Amen. Now before um, I pray into that, before we we do some prayer around um, uh, the time thief, the, the, the eater of years in your life, we do some things like that, I need to invite those of you in the room who have not yet given your life to Jesus. Um, uh, Either you've never given your life to Jesus, you have not yet made him your Lord and Savior, or you have at one point, but you've fallen away. You're not living for him, but you found yourself here today. Well, here's what I want you to know, that every day, every morning, his mercy is new. You may have messed up a hundred days last year, you know, like ashamed, okay? 
but today his mercy is new. His mercy is new every single morning and you can start again. All right, and that's a clear promise in his word. Um, today is also a day of salvation. We don't wait till tomorrow. We don't wait till we get our act together because you can't without the spirit of God. And so if that's you today, on the count of three, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to lift your hands and I'm gonna pray for you, okay? If that's you, you need to get right with Jesus today. Um, uh, you've never given your life to him. You've, you did it one time, but you are not serving him. And this is you today. You're going to get right with him. Today is the day of salvation. On the count of three, lift your hand. One, two, three, just raise your hand right now. I'm gonna pray for you. There we go, all over the room. Ra raise your hand if you're online. Um, uh, raise your hand online and we're going to pray. All right, let's pray together. Uh, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I renounce every spirit but the Holy Spirit. I just uh, uh, make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. I choose to live for you for the rest of my days. And according to your word, I am right now a child of God. Can we give Jesus praise? Um, I'm gonna invite the prayer team to come forward and they're gonna be stationed up here because some of you are gonna need a little bit extra prayer. I'm gonna pray for you first, but you're gonna need some extra prayer with this team. Um, and it could be for any reason that you need help with. Maybe you need a job, maybe you got a family problem, something's happening in your marriage. But this one topic specifically, I'm gonna, we're gonna pray about the, the eater of years. We're gonna pray about um, uh, uh, what's going on with you at night. And so I'm gonna ask you to bow your head and just lift your hands right now. Lord Jesus, I pray over this room. I pray over those uh, here that have suffered from the bitter eater of years. Years have been lost. And I speak over them, Lord, Joel 2.25, Lord, where you said that you are restoring their lost years. And I speak that over them. I speak that blessing, that turnaround, that shift. And I speak into that situation that there is a change right now. Lord, I ask you to send the angel that restores time to their life, Lord, to bring about a rest and a catch up, a catching up, Lord, of where a time has been lost and time has been wasted. I pray, Lord, that they find themselves in sync and in alignment with your timing. They just know it, they sense it, they feel it, that they get in line with what you are doing and saying today in their life in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are struggling at night, who, who are struggling to sleep, having nightmares, having demonic visitations. I break that now in Jesus' name. I command your sleep to be restored. He gives his beloved sleep and you will sleep at night. There is a change happening right now. You're gonna get off the medication. You're not gonna need the medication to actually sleep at night. You will sleep like a normal person. You will sleep the way God intended. Holy Spirit, come. 